everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got episode 76 of my brand new comics haul series for you guys this week. It's a really small haul, but this is the series where each and every week when I grab my new books at the local comic shop, I show you every issue I picked up, and I tell you a little bit about every single issue. So I've only got three issues this week that actually released this week. All of them are from Marvel. I figured I'd still put out a video because it still is a decent amount of issues. So let's get right into it here with this quick new comics haul. The first one that I've got here from Marvel is a brand new one shot that they just came out with, and this is Avengers 1 million and BC issue number one. So this is only a one shot, but it is connected to Jason Aaron's run on the Avengers. I stopped getting that series and I wasn't really planning on grabbing this either, but I saw they had one copy left on the shelf. I had kind of been considering it and I just pulled the plug on this. And this is connected to his run. I don't know how connected it is. Basically, I think since Marvel Legacy number one, which is way back in, I want to say like 2017, maybe 2018, Jason Aaron as a writer has been building up this whole uh, Avengers 1 million BC idea. So we have Odin in it, the original uh, host of the Phoenix, and basically the reason that this issue might be pretty important um, is because it might be kind of retconning the origin of Thor in a certain way, at least the birth of Thor. In the pages of the main Avengers series by Jason Aaron, which I dropped like I said, uh, we had this whole storyline where the current Phoenix told Thor that um, his mom was actually this original host of the Phoenix, which Odin was like in love with, I guess. So it could be that they are actually the parents of Thor and not uh, Gaia being Thor's mother like we thought this whole time. It's Avengers 1 million BC number one. All right, the next issue that I grabbed from Marvel Comics is the first issue now um, of a three-issue miniseries. It's a tie-in to Avengers X-Men Eternals Judgment Day, and this one is uh, Avengers X-Men Eternals Death to the Mutants number one. So I think this is the only like tie-in miniseries they're actually doing for Judgment Day, which means that it is pretty important. It is written by Kieran Gillen as well. The main event is also written by Kieran Gillen. And guys, I'm not going to give you any spoilers for Judgment Day, but you have to read issues one and two. Issue one, I was like, this is okay. It's kind of word heavy. It's not really switching up uh, the way that Kieran Gillen writes because I didn't like his Eternal stuff all that much. I didn't really like his X-Men stuff that much either. But issue two really changed things up. And there was a huge twist that just changed the whole trajectory of the series going forward. The main idea that we started with going into it was just that the Eternals have found out that the mutants, their excess deviation, the Eternals' mission is to wipe out excess deviation. So we thought it was just going to be this war between the X-Men and the Eternals with the Avengers caught in the crossfire. There was a huge twist at the end of number two. Some really huge stuff just going on in the Marvel Universe in general, which can be expected from an event comic, but that's uh, Avengers X-Men Eternals Death of the Mutants number one of three. And finally, in this really tiny new comics haul, the third and final issue that I have here from Marvel Comics is Hulk issue number eight. This one uh, was pushed back so many times. This was supposed to come out, I want to say, two, maybe well, like one or two months ago. And I'm thinking maybe the reason is because Donny Cates is facing some deadline issues. It also could be because of the print run uh, issues that Marvel has been having just because of all the supply chain issues that are happening all across the world right now. But I did notice there's co-writing on this issue by Daniel Warren Johnson. I'm actually here for that. I really like Daniel Warren Johnson's writing. He's doing that Do a Powerbomb series right now. But man, Banner of War has seriously stepped things up for both the Hulk ongoing series and the Thor ongoing series my opinion. I don't know what th those two ongoing series are going to be like when they return to their, you know, regular arcs and the crossover ends, but this whole crossover has just been super epic. I'm really liking the scope of it and just like the ideas that uh, the creative team is bringing to the table. The artwork in here is my favorite part though. Martin Cocolo on artwork, and they just announced he's doing a new Deadpool series, which I'm definitely going to grab because he's really become one of my new favorite artists after Banner of War. Hulk issue number eight, the final part of Banner of War. Well, all right then, guys. Sorry for the short video. I know it was a pretty small haul this week, but if you guys had a bigger week, let me know what you grabbed down in the comment section below. The book I'm probably looking forward to reading the most, even though all of the releases are pretty big that I ended up grabbing from Marvel this week, is Hulk number eight, just because the artwork and the writing has been so good in Banner of War. Avengers 1 million BC is also something to look forward to, though, and uh, that huge twist in Judgment Day. I just need to see where that goes next with the tie-ins. Uh, but that's about it for this video. If you want to show a little bit more support to the channel, if you enjoyed the video, you can also hit the subscribe button down below. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.